Welcome back to another video. So I've actually brought my camera in the gym today. I'm actually gonna start putting a bit more effort into these videos. Um, obviously I'm still in prep. So the reason my videos have been a bit, I'm gonna say they've been a bit worse recently is because I was in prep for Commonwealth and I was expecting a really quick flight. So I didn't wanna bring my camera in the gym just because it was an extra distraction. Like I was just getting through my sessions as quickly as possible basically. But with British, there are currently 20 people signed up to the 84s. We have no idea what the flights are gonna be like, but I'm imagining it's probably not gonna be super speedy like prime time flights, but I don't have a clue. So at least for now, I'm gonna bring my camera in and I'm still gonna train it like fairly quickly just because that's how I like to train, but I'm gonna allow myself a bit of time between lifts, like between squats and bench and then between men and deadlifts, depending on what day it is, um, to actually sit and recap and give my thoughts on things. Um, so yeah, welcome back to another video, episode two of my British prep. I think I am gonna stick to one a week for now, We'll see what happens. I'm not gonna to commit to anything. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna try and keep uploading as regularly as possible so that you guys can see what's happening with my prep into British. But I am excited. Entries close in two days. So by the time this video goes up, entries would have closed. They might have released a schedule. It's probably gonna, unless, the, I mean, hopefully they've already started working on it based on current numbers, but we'll see. Um, would like to get a schedule as quickly as possible though, so I can plan exactly what I'm doing, but doesn't matter either way. Currently ranked third, we'll just see what happens. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna get ready to squat. Fatal attraction, lovers in action, yeah. One of us, one of us is gonna get hurt. You got your madness and I'm good at bad habits, oh. One of us, one of us is gonna get hurt. very out of breath literally just taking my knees and everything off and I've just finished my last set um pretty happy my doms in my legs are terrible from Sunday so it's now Tuesday so Sunday's accessory day killed my legs like it was the first leg day I'd done since what like two weeks before Commonwealth before I brought my accessories back and yeah like my doms were really bad yesterday and today like even just bending my leg like my quads feel so tender so considering that, I'm pretty happy. Um, on my top set, my, so I warmed up with a thumbless grip. I used to always squat with a thumbless grip. And sometimes it feels a lot better on my joints. And because I've been struggling with my joints a little bit more recently, I was like, actually, let me just try this and see. And it felt all right until my last one at 155, where it just felt a little bit kind of unstable. It felt lighter on my back, but I just didn't feel quite as confident under it. So for my top set, I mean, I should have retaken my last one up with a proper grip to be fair, but I just jumped straight to my top set anyway. Cause in my head I was like, 170 triple, you can do that, it's fine. Um, but then when I did like my thumb around the bar, I'm so out of breath and unracked it, it just felt so painful in my left wrist. Like if you watch the video, my left wrist was bent right back. Like my back tightness wasn't great. Like it was just a shambles, but it still moved really well. Like it didn't feel super easy, but obviously I'm feeling sluggish and fatigued anyway from my leg day the other day. So actually, I'm pretty happy. Like it was still very, very light. Well, not light, but like it was very easy. Um, had a good few reps in the tank still. So that's promising. Um, and usually the first two weeks of the block are when I feel my absolute worst anyway, and especially considering, just kick the plates over. Especially considering I've just done Commonwealth as well, where I literally maxed out my squat. Well, I lost balance and made it an RPU 10. Um, I can't complain, like 170 triple was fine. It was comfortable enough. Gives me enough confidence to go obviously a fairly big jump for next week, um, which will be technically the last week of this first three week block into comp. Um, and then back offs, squats just felt a bit off, but they felt easy, like they were super easy. First set I did normal grip, farm under, um, and it felt fine. Um, just literally just felt fine, I didn't really have to think about it. Um, second set I did thumbless again, just cause I wanted to see what it felt like on my back off with a lighter load and my hands were too sweaty, so gradually my hands just slid along the bar. I don't usually need to chalk my hands for squats, but obviously if I'm doing a thumbless grip, I do. 
So then for my last set, I was like, nah, I'm just gonna do normal grip. Um, it'll be fine, I'm not gonna change anything this close to comp anyway, that would be a bit silly. So I went back to my normal grip for my last set and I just rushed through it and it was fine. It's kind of crazy to me that it's easy enough to do back off fives at 150 on week two, that even if things feel a bit crap, I can just rush through them still. Like that's a bit crazy to me, but it's good. It means we're getting stronger. Um, yeah, nothing else to really say. I'm so out of breath, so sorry if you're listening to this. I'm gonna set up the bench, gonna get my boyfriend to do my hand offs, I think, because I think that's part of the reason my elbow's been a bit worse, just because lift offs on this rack aren't the easiest, because I'm still getting used to it. So, bench should be good. And yeah, that's it then. Literally all squats and bench today, so I quite like this day, it's quite quick now. Um, and then deadlifts and bench, to all last and bench, and deadlifts tomorrow. So, with some accessories after, that's fine. Anyway, gonna stop talking and set up the bench. So just finished day one, bench went really well. So I've got to confess, the plan was to do three singles at 105. Technically they were supposed to be slightly longer pause singles, but I'm gonna be honest, I completely forgot that until they were done. Um, but I did 107.5 because I was like, well actually, I felt really strong warming up. So I was, as I read my plan, I was like, look, I'll put 105, but actually if warm ups feel really good, I think I'm gonna to go to 107.5 because I know I've got the strength for that and to kind of have some room in the tank still. And next week, I think it'd be really cool to do 110 to 112 for my singles. And I'm also not too worried about the long pauses at this point because I'm quite confident with pausing reps now. Um, and obviously, well, I said obviously, in the weeks leading into British, I'm hoping if my boyfriend's about, he can give me press commands and stuff anyway so I can stay used to them. But at Commonwealth, I have to admit, the pauses felt really, really short. And I mean, at British, they shouldn't be any stricter than they were at Commonwealth. So, and when I say they felt short, they weren't actually short. My camera's going out of focus. They weren't actually short pauses, it's just under the bar they felt short, which is a really good thing because I've been obviously practicing my long pauses and stuff. So basically, really happy with how 107.5 moved, especially because I didn't feel as strong as I sometimes do. Like 100 is my last warm up, didn't feel as speedy as 100 sometimes does. So to know that I can do three long or three singles, not long pause at all, the second one barely even had a pause. Um, but to know I can do three singles, solid singles at 107.5, when bench isn't feeling its strongest is a massive win. Um, and then back offs, I haven't actually watched them back yet, um, but triples at 100 were felt really comfortable. And I actually, this is why I'm still so out of breath. I have like no rest. So my boyfriend was giving me lift offs and I know he wanted to get indoors and like he didn't want to be out here. So I kind of just rushed through them and I probably had like 60 seconds between each. So actually three, no, four sets of three at 100 with like 60 seconds rest after three singles at 107.5 on not my strongest day. I can't complain at that. So I'm very happy. I can't believe how out of breath I am. I'm so sorry to everyone watching this. Um, but yeah, really happy. Yeah, nothing else to really say. I'm gonna just wrap up, clean the gym up. Um, I'm gonna probably go for a walk tonight. I'm trying to get my steps up. Um, so probably gonna go for a walk tonight. Um, and that's kind of the plan. I need to have dinner in a sec as well. But yeah, I'm happy. Bench went really, really well. I'm feeling really confident with bench. Like. I don't know what I'm gonna hit at British. I also don't know what the carpet's gonna be like. Like if it's slippy carpet, which it usually is at the British, I'm probably just gonna try and match 112. But if things feel good on the day, like I wanna put myself in a position where I could go 115 potentially, that'd be really cool to hit. Um, especially after having 107.5 as my like sticking point in comp for literally over a year, to then hit another PB literally six weeks after I hit 112 would be really cool. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm gonna stop talking, wrap this part up here. I will see you in the next clip for Larson Press and deadlifts. So it is Wednesday evening. It is half past five. Today's plan was to train at like one, two-ish as soon as I finish work. So normally for me, a Wednesday is like a half day. I tend to get most of my work done by like one, two-ish and I give myself like an afternoon off um, I mostly did that just for like training purposes, but also it's just nice to have a day during the week where I don't have as much of a workload. Um, I finished work at one and I, I think I might be getting ill. Um, when we were in South Africa, pretty much everyone came down with a bug except for me. And then before we actually went, my boyfriend had a really bad bug as well. 
and I managed to avoid all of it, but I think it might possibly be catching up with me. My parents are also both ill at the moment, although I haven't seen them tons lately. But basically my sleep, like I've been so tired all the time. Like getting up in the morning is not something I particularly struggle with most of the time. Um, especially earlier on in the week, cause like Thursdays and Fridays are the days where I get up the earliest, but like I don't get up until like half seven on a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, which for me is not early, like that's normal. And the last few days I've literally just barely been able to get up. So yeah, I finished work today and I was like, I'm just gonna lay in bed for a couple of hours and I'm just gonna let myself have a nap. Like, I felt really tired and I was like, I've not got any more work to do today. Like all I have to do is train and it's not a particularly long session. It's last and press, deadlifts, and then like beast dance RDLs. So it's not a long session. I, th I think last week it took like an hour and a half and that was going pretty slowly anyway. So I was like, I'm just gonna let myself have a bit of a nap. I was out cold for like three hours. Like I was completely in a deep sleep. So that's not ideal. Um, so I got up and I had some food, just some, I had a couple of apples just because I need eating up um, to get some pre-workout carbs in, been drinking, getting hydrated and I'm now about to train at half five, which was not the plan, but I'm not particularly worried. Um, my body obviously needs to sleep. Like I used to be someone that napped a lot, but then I also used to overwork myself a lot. And whilst I might still overwork myself, it's not as bad as it used to be. And like, generally speaking, I don't really nap now unless I am unwell. So I thought I'd just let myself have a nap, especially because I'm up early the next couple of days. So I'll just do that. And yeah, but it's all fine. I'm gonna go for a long walk after my session as well, I think, if I get time. Um, I need to do some meal prep and stuff for the next couple of days because I'm not home as much. But I went for a walk, or we went for a walk last night at like nine-ish for about an hour, just over an hour. Um, and I actually slept really well after that, even though I felt terrible when I woke up this morning. So I think I'm gonna probably do that again tonight because it was a good way to shut off. Um, and I want to get my steps up. Like today, I've done hardly any. Like normally, I'd use my treadmill at my desk. I've got like an under desk treadmill I can use, or like walking pad. But I didn't actually get it out today because I, well, I had quite a lot of work to get through in order to be able to finish between like one and two. Um, but I, I concentrate better when I'm sat down at my desk. So I didn't really use that today. I think I'll just go for more walks this afternoon, like maybe a pre training and a post training walk. But neither of those have happened yet. But it's fine. I'm going to train. I'm going to stop talking and then hopefully I'll go for a walk later this evening just to get some movement in. Um, my meal, well, my, my dinner is already prepped, so I just have to heat that up when I'm done, eat that. I think my boyfriend wants to come in and train later as well, so I said I'd come in here and help him. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. I need to stop talking. I've got not a lot of energy. I'm also on my second kind of monster today, which is not ideal. I like to just have one a day, and I don't really have them before training anymore. Either. Like I tend to have them when I'm at my desk, just because I feel like it just, well, I like the taste of it and it doesn't really, like, I don't think the caffeine in it does a lot for me in terms of energy anyway, just because I drink it so, like, it takes, like, two hours to get through a can. Um, so it doesn't really offer me that much of a caffeine boost or I don't feel much of a difference, but I just felt like I needed something, so I'm in my second can. But, yeah, that's really not interesting. I'm going to train. <laughs> much better than last week. Um, last week's last and press was ropey to say the least, um, but actually this week it felt really light. Um, I went a little bit heavier this week, so I added two and a half to everything. Last week's 97.5 single on last one was so slow, and today's 100, like I knew it was gonna be easy as I was setting up. And actually I was really smiling at the end because as I was setting up, I was just thinking to myself, I was like, the fact that I'm about to last and press 100 kilos and it's probably gonna move really easily like younger Sean would be like through the roof at that. Um, and it just made me quite happy just to think about how far obviously like, my lifts have come. 
don't get me wrong, 100 kilos for me now is not heavy, like I should be able to last and press it. Um, but I'm just very happy and I feel like perspective is important. Remember obviously how strong you've got, like 100 kilos is still a massive bench, like even though it's become quite a common bench press, like it's still a huge milestone and not everyone will get there. Like, don't get me wrong, I believe pretty much everyone can get there, obviously weight class dependent. Um, but yeah, I just think perspective is important and I was just really happy thinking about how like ecstatic I would be to think back like a few years ago. I find my video of where I first ever hit 100 kilos and it was like the 7th of May, 2021. Um, and like I can last and press it like it's an empty bar. And obviously I've, like, I've benched a lot more than that, like with feet down, but it's just quite a nice little perspective thing to think about. Also, I had someone ask me why I'm not sink benching anymore. And I realized I never actually spoke about it. I think it wasn't actually an active decision. It just kind of happened. Like I was, if you watch my prep into Commonwealth, you know that I was getting a bit frustrated with bench press. Um, my butt kept coming up, it was just quite inconsistent. When I started training, it, when we got the home gym set up, like this home gym, and I started using a combo rack for bench press, because I wanted to obviously train in a combo, um, just to make it as similar to comp conditions as possible. Um, my butt kept coming up, and I really struggled on this rack to hold my position, but in the same way that I struggled to hold my position in comp, um, and it's usually due to feeling a bit slippier on the bench, or feeling a little bit like my feet are slipping and stuff. So I basically want to find a way around that. And which is why when I trained here, I made sure to train in my singlet all the time rather than benching in my sports bra. That's why I'm still just training in baggy tops. I will go back to my singlet in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, and why I bring our doormat in for my feet down bench because it's slightly slippery. So it mimics comp conditions a little bit better. Um, but basically I didn't actively choose to stop sinking. I was getting so frustrated with holding my positioning that I kind of just stopped thinking as much and I let my instincts take over a little bit the only thing I started focusing on was keeping my neck pressed firmly into the pad like the entire time and keeping that tension and that pressure and bringing my chest to meet the bar they were the only two things I started thinking about and with that my positioning like I started flaring a little bit more which I am being cautious with because I already feel like my shoulders aren't loving it I've said this before Tucked benching is the best for me, but when it comes to comp and holding position, if you tuck, naturally your body just kind of flattens a bit more under the bar. Um, so flaring is gonna be stronger for me, but I just have to keep my shoulders happy, which is a common issue with flaring and since the elbow depth roll especially, like shoulder injuries on bench have been very common. Um, so I need to basically just keep an eye on shoulder health and stuff, but it's fine, I'm gonna, like I don't feel like I'm going to get injured, it's not a problem, I've had shoulder issues in the past that I'm very good at managing, and they never really come back anymore, so it's just a case of, keeping an eye on it and being very kind of honest with myself about how my shoulders are feeling. Um, but yeah, essentially I just was like, there was this one session I can remember, I, I think I said it on here, I, um, everything was feeling terrible. And I watched Agatha Shitko's bench, like she'd just posted her training from the day and she did a double at like 156 and I watched it and I was like, Sean, you're actually being pathetic. Like stop having a hissy fit. I think I was benching like 95, 100 kilos at the time. I was like, stop having a hissy fit. Like this is the easiest way for you even if you have bad positioning, you can still move this. Just, just stop overthinking it and just bench. And then like basically I told myself to grow up and it started moving really well. Um, and I just kind of started making mental notes of what felt good, which is when I started flaring slightly more. And it helped with my positioning, obviously like common sense wise, if you're tucking, your whole body is gonna sink more, like because more of your like upper back and shoulders and stuff are gonna be kind of on the bench to sink. And obviously, I don't know how to explain this, but like if you watch from the side, you'll see you do tend to lose positioning slightly more if you have more of a tucked position versus a flare. Like with flaring, the pressure, the bar, obviously like gravity and everything, like the bar pushing down on you isn't gonna mess with your positioning as much. I've not explained that very well. In my head, I know exactly what I'm trying to explain. And I've explained this to so many people in the past, but just can't get my words out right now because I'm a bit sleepy. Um, anyway, sinking though, I still want to learn to sink bench. Like that's still something I want to work on. And sometimes I find myself doing it by accident, like if I'm rushing through reps. Um, but basically, because Commonwealth was getting close, I think I was like two weeks out and I was having this hissy fit on bench. And it was just, it wasn't a consistent movement for me yet. I hadn't nailed the skill at all. It was very hit and miss from week to week. I just decided to continue with what felt best and stop overthinking it. And essentially just stuck to what I know, which is obviously more of a soft touch. Um, and then because I got British straight after, I'm continuing with that and it's going really well. There's a chance I might stick with soft touch in the future, but I would like to try sinking and I felt like I started to make progress with it, but then obviously the pressure of competing and having to hit high numbers kind of crept up on me. Um, and so I just felt like it was a time to take a break from sinking. 
I think post-comp, I'm going to probably try and do it again because it's a skill I want to be able to teach as well as possible as well. And who better to practice on than myself? Um, and also, I said this is the woman that asked me this question. There's a reason, like there's got to be a reason most of the biggest benches sink. And not just because they've had to adapt for the elbow depth rule, because a lot of them didn't have to adapt for the elbow depth rule, but they're still choosing to sink. Um, so I'm just going to try it. Maybe not a full on sink, because I also think there is rumours that the IPF are going to look into heaving a little bit more and be a bit more strict on that because a lot of the top benches, I think arguably they are heaving, but obviously, I mean, um, if they get away with it in comp, they get away with it in comp, like I don't care. Um, it's not something that I even think about, but I heard rumours that the IPF may be implementing stricter rules on basically not, not sink benching, but if people let their obviously, a body collapse and then they heave it off their chest, um, which I think a good example of that's probably someone like Alba, um, the 63 junior lifter who is now going to Sheffield. I don't think there's anything wrong with her bench, but I can, I can see the argument. She's just one example. There's plenty of examples I can list off. Um, so yeah, I don't want to get into that habit and then they bring this rule in as well. So that'll be interesting to see what happens. I think it's normally like the start of the year they announce any rule changes. Um, but yeah, so I still think sinking is something I want to work on, but purely just because of running out of time, wanting to obviously place as high as possible at these comps. It just seemed silly to continue working on sinking when I was just struggling with the basics of benching at the time and I was just getting in my head so much. So that is why I stopped sinking. Um, also, I had a question about why I'm doing last and press on this day. So in my block into Commonwealth, I did ascending sets before I did my long pause singles and uh, my triples back off, which was my Tuesday session, my session you'll just see. Um, so I took my ascending sets off of that day because it was just extra kind of junk volume, if, if anything. Um, and I put ascending last and press today because I did always bench an extra day of the week, but I usually did ascending sets of six or seven, depending on the block, at pump gyms, which is where I do my accessories. But because I've given deadlifts their own day, and I would rather bench here if possible rather than at that gym, I, um, I moved my ascending sets to this day, and I decided to move them to last and press. So I drop the reps as well, which is why I'm just doing sets of four and then a single, because I still wanted a little bit of heavier stimulus, especially with coming into comp block. Like there's no point doing tons of high reps if I don't need to. Like I don't particularly respond that differently to that level of volume. And so far this seems to be working really well. But honestly, the reason I put last and press back in rather than feet down is because my back can't handle multiple days of feet down in a row, um, or just generally multiple days of feet down. Like my back's been feeling a bit niggly for a good few weeks now. And it's only really when I'm setting up for bench that it really hurts or when I'm benching that it hurts. So by doing last and press, it's just taking a little bit of extra pressure off my lower back, which is why I put last and press on this day. I really need to stop talking in deadlift. I have moved the bar over there. Um, yeah, I'm now gonna set up to deadlift or well, start warming up for deadlifts. I don't even know what I've got. I've got a top single, got a back off triple and then three by five and then B stance RDLs and that will be done. So I'm gonna crack on. This is what happened. Such a god and goddess could get anyone she likes But when she's looking at me like that I know she's only mine My friends think she's so dumb and stupid But I won't tell anyone Her hands are in my head Whispering in my ear I won't tell anyone Not a soul out of breath i've literally just put down the bar and finished my last set of deadlifts i've got b stance rdls left to go but i won't film anymore for tonight um but i just want to quickly talk about deadlifts i'm feeling so happy i have struggled with deadlifts for a while at commonwealth they were terrible like the, the block being in commonwealth they have just not felt great for a while um and i think part of that is like men well, all of it's mental it's not a strength issue it's just a mental thing and I kind of just told myself today, like that even this morning when I was thinking about my session, I was like, you need to just get over yourself and just enjoy it. Like be grateful. Like, there was a time I couldn't deadlift because of my back and it wasn't that long ago. Like I need to just be able to enjoy the fact that I'm healthy and I'm able to just approach the bar with confidence, knowing that I'm not going to get hurt and <laughs> deadlift went so well. Spent. Like I just put on songs that I enjoyed, kind of just put it up a bit louder than normal, just kind of got into the mood, had fun and just got myself in like a cheerful, upbeat mood. And they went so well. 
my top single was like a little bit slow, but it was definitely easier than my 165 was last week. That's a 10 kilo jump. Um, I then did a triple at 160, which was easier than my 150 triple last week. I then did back off fives at 145, which obviously that's not heavy, like in, in like comparison to my top end, but I didn't even like re-brace for every single rep. Like I was confident enough to just go, 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 go. And that is a huge thing, like especially the last two sets. I didn't film the second set, but I filmed the last set because I wanted to just kind of watch it back as a reminder, like you're healthy enough to just go for it. So just go for it. And they went so well, like I actually enjoyed deadlifting and I'm really happy, basically. Um, if I can get my deadlift, even just comfortably at 190 again, like which it should be easy for me to pull 190, then like I, I have a very, very good chance of third at British, I think. So we're gonna just see, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself because obviously I don't know where, so I mean, someone else could enter, there's literally one more day for entries, but quite I am still ranked third and obviously I wanna give it my best shot, but also I have just competed, so I'm not, chasing third obviously if it's doable i'm gonna go for it um but if my deadlift turns up then there's no excuse for my total to not be like a massive pb so i'm very excited i'm very happy and i just need to keep this mindset for deadlifts now going forwards i've got what four weeks till british i think like it's not long i need to just continue to enjoy training enjoy deadlifts approach them with confidence and we'll see what happens but i'm gonna stop talking and continue my session so i'll see you for Saturday session, I probably won't feel anything in top between now and then. I've just got a couple of busy days of work, like Thursdays and Fridays are my he most hectic days when it comes to work. Um, so I'm gonna stop talking and finish my session. We've said our goodbyes, but we won't go home just yet. You've got your head down, just like when we first met. forgetting to film my a recap from Saturday's session. It is Monday afternoon. I'm hoping to get this video up either today or tomorrow. Um, on Saturday morning, I trained. You've seen my session. It went really, really well. Um, I literally got up just after nine and I was lifting and in my gym by 10. So I wasn't even up for an hour before I was in the gym and training, which is why I completely forgot to take my camera. Basically, I just had plans and stuff in the afternoon. So I wanted to just get up and get done pretty quickly. Um, which I did and I got actually I'm really enjoying training first thing on a Saturday um, I'm gonna probably try and keep doing that for the most part until comp um, I'm not lifting until like 2 p.m. on comp though. So actually I might I don't know. We'll see. I'm just enjoying getting things done I'm also looking forward to comp being done because I miss not training at the weekends and having an accessory day on a Sunday is just not fun I love the gym 
But yesterday I, so on a Sunday I do a lot of programming um, and a lot of like communicating with clients and stuff just because it's a day that we're kind of, we're all free. So a lot of messaging back and forth and stuff happens on a Sunday. And normally though, I'm at my desk for like four or five hours maximum. And the only other thing I tend to do most Sundays is a food shop. Yesterday, I was up in good time. I like fine, whatever, finished work in good time, did the food shop in good time. I still didn't get to the gym to do my accessory day, which takes me less than an hour. I didn't get to the gym until like 20 to 10 in the evening. There was no reason why I couldn't have gone earlier. I had so much time available to me, but I just couldn't make myself because I just really hate training on a Sunday. So this is not what I was actually sitting and talk about, but I am quite looking forward to comp being done. Although I do think I'm gonna probably take that accessory day out because I'm currently training five days a week. And I think for the last two, three weeks into British, which will be basically the final three week block because I'm doing three week blocks. Um, this is week two of three, and then I've got another three week block into British. Um, I do think I might take this accessory day out for those final three weeks, just because it's quite leg focused and I don't really need to be tiring my legs out when I've got squats both days, obviously I wanna push my squat as heavy as possible. Um, so that is something I might potentially do. Um, but yeah, that was a little rant about the fact that I don't like training both days at the weekend. But I am enjoying training first thing on a, sun on a Saturday. The only thing is obviously I forgot to take my camera. I can't even really remember massively what I did. I just remember everything felt pretty good. I remember on my bench top single, I had major intrusive thoughts as I was unracking. So my boyfriend has been going out and spotting me quite a lot for my bench and giving me lift offs because if I don't get an unrack, I do find that when I unrack myself, my elbows do get a little bit worse and that rack, I'm still getting used to it. So just for ease and just for like keeping my elbows a bit happier and just making the reps feel a bit easier. He has been giving me a lift off a lot of the time when I train, but obviously I'm not going to drag him. Well, I mean, he was up, but I'm not going to make him come and sit with me on a Saturday morning when he's got other stuff to do. Um, so I did my own unracks and everything. And as I unracked the 110, as I was unracking it, I caught the rack. And I remember so clearly as I was like dropping my hips and taking my brace, like breath and everything and bracing, I just thought to myself, oh, if you fail this, you have not set the safeties. Like that's gonna really hurt if you have to roll this down yourself. That's not what I wanna be thinking when I'm literally about to bench 110 with no spotter, no safeties. Like I know I can do it. I would have set the safeties if I didn't think I could do it, but it was just in that one split second I had that thought. And then obviously I messed the rep up, barely paused it and I was nervous as hell to do it. Um, but it still moved really quickly and bench is definitely feeling the strongest it has like i'm feeling really confident with bench squats don't feel fantastic at the moment but as a trade-off deadlifts have been feeling a little bit better so i think that's just that that's how the pendulum swings like they're not both going to feel great for me at the same time squats still feel strong enough um i still squat 180 really comfortably no spotters not feeling overly fresh like one thing is when i do train first thing in the morning my lower back just, ju it feels very stiff and it does make me a little bit nervous. Like it doesn't feel particularly great training first thing in that sense. If anything though, it does just make me a little bit more intentional with my bracing and my positioning and making sure I get that sort of thing right. And it's never feeling any worse at the end of these sessions. Um, so yeah, that was one thing with squats. Like I was a little bit, not nervous with my back, but I was just aware of it, which obviously when you're aware of things like that, it can make it harder to get things right. You're a little bit in your head. So that was the other thing that I thought was probably worth mentioning, but everything felt good. Everything moved well. It's a really weird feeling only being on week two, but already lifting fairly heavy, fairly high intensity and only having one week left of the block. Because in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's week two. This is so easy, so comfortable. And I'm like, but it's not because you've only got one more week of the block. So it shouldn't be that easy. And I do think numbers wise, like I'm navigating this pretty well. Um, my week three numbers, you'll see in the next video, um, but they're all like very much doable, but they are again, pretty heavy and lining me up for where I kind of want to be ahead of British. Um, but yeah, I've not really got anything else to say in this video. I will talk through more interesting points in the next video, but I just want to film this little outro, recap my session a little bit. I did RDLs as well, which I do think probably will be getting taken out if not from now um, after this week or like this next week of training. I don't know what it is, but there's some issue with my left hip at the moment. And it's not an issue, like it's not an injury. It's well, it could potentially be like a slight minor injury, but it's nothing I'm worried about. But I have noticed weirdly after RDLs, it does feel a little bit worse. And to be honest, although I'm enjoying pushing RDLs and I know that they are a massively weak link for me in terms of my deadlift. And I think keeping to like keeping focusing on progressing them will 100% help my conventional deadlift. 
right now I don't need to worry about that because I'm not really going to build a lot of strength between now and four weeks time less than four weeks time um if anything it's that fatigue trade-off I might as well pull them back take them out or just do super light just for the blood flow and just focus on conventional basically um so just to essentially keep my hips slightly happier I think I might also take out RDLs but I haven't made a full decision on that yet I'm just going to see how the next week goes um but yeah that the rest of the Saturday and a little bit on Sunday I was aware of my hip with my lower body accessories yesterday as well I was I went a little bit lighter especially on single leg leg press because I think the like focusing on obviously good range of motion and everything on that anyway which I always do even when it's heavier um I just wanted to really be aware of my hip so I went a little bit lighter still pushed similar intensity just a few more reps um and just really focused on no like paying attention to how my hip was feeling um, but it's never a problem when I squat, it's never a problem when I bench, and it's not a problem when I deadlift. So I'm not concerned, um, but it's just being sensible with what's necessary right now and what isn't worth it. And part of me is thinking heavy RDLs at least probably aren't worth it. But I haven't made a decision yet. I'm just going to keep seeing how things feel. Um, but that's all I've got to say. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I promise content will get more engaging soon. Um, but yeah, thank you for made it to the end. I really appreciate it. Leave a like, comment, let me know what you think of how my lifts have been moving this week, what sort of numbers you like, do you think I'll be able to hit more PBs in four weeks time when I've literally just competed? Let me know and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in a week's time for the next week of training.